Hello brethren, you're welcome to today's teaching. Welcome to the Narrow West Christ for All Nations. I am Brother Hosanna David. Let us pray. Our King, King of the whole universe, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, you have given us this great gift of salvation. Our righteousness is in you. You, the judge, you are the same one that came to redeem us. So you were both the redeemer and the judge. How sweet is this. Father, please have mercy upon us, your children. Have mercy upon our ignorance. And open our eyes to see the truth of your word. Shine your light upon our hearts so that we can receive from heaven alone. Put our trust in you, O Lord God, that your efforts on the cross of Calvary through your Son Jesus Christ will not be in vain. Help us to know you. Help us to love you. Help us to put in all our efforts into knowing you and doing your will. Help us to understand how to preserve this gift of righteousness until we meet at your feet. Lord, don't give up on us. Even when our heart is beclouded by our ignorance and doubts and trials, temptations and pressures from the world, Lord, do not give up on us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Before we continue, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to this channel and we encourage you to share our videos. Please share our videos so that other people can see our videos. And when you subscribe, please don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can get updates whenever we post any video. God bless you. We also want to appreciate those who share our videos every time. May the Lord God Almighty bless you abundantly. We are talking about our righteousness in Christ. Our righteousness in Christ. A lot of people do not know what righteousness means. Righteousness is being right with God. To be righteous is being right with God. That is the simplest way I can put it. So Jesus Christ came to establish the New Testament, which is a new agreement. And he used his own blood to establish it. In the Old Testament, before you can be righteous, you have to slaughter animals. Before your sins can be forgiven, you have to slaughter animals. And without the shedding of blood, there was never the remission of sin. But when Jesus Christ came, he did not defy the late standard of sacrifice because he understands everything Jesus Christ is God. So he came and offered himself as a lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. So he came and offered himself Jesus Christ is God and he is judge. The same one who judged us and saw that, oh, we were all sinners going astray on our path to destruction. The same one came and shed his blood for us that we might be saved. So let's look at this topic, to this topic. Uh, let's look at today's test. Let's look at today's test. Second Corinthians. We're going to read uh, chapter 5, starting from verse 14, and we will read through down to 21. Please uh, pay attention to these words. These words are very rich. For the love of Christ constrained us, constrained us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. 
and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again listen Adam died because he sinned and the sin he committed all sinned and as he paid the penalty of death everyone also that sinned through Adam must die physical death so Jesus Christ also came and died in our place and when he died all died so that when he rises up when he resurrects to live all who believe in him and confess their sins believe in his redemptive work confess their sins and get buried in water with him can also resurrect with him baptism is a barrier is a death the barrier and the resurrection of jesus christ it represents these three things the death the barrier and the resurrection of jesus christ three things verse 16 wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yea though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold behold all things are become new verse 18 and all things are of god who had reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that god was in christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the, the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors of for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ in, in christ's dead be ye reconciled to God. Now look at verse 21. Very, very important. As far as this topic is concerned. For he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Praise God. God made him sin for us. So that we can be made the righteousness of God in Him. Now let me tell you something. In the Old Testament, when someone commits sin, for God to forgive, that person has to slaughter an animal. Then in the New Testament, for you to be forgiven, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. So the blood of the eternal covenant cleanses you from your sins Jesus Christ is our advocate he is the propitiation for our sins he came and died in our place so that we will not perish so all our righteousness is in Christ please next week we are going to continue with this topic our righteousness is in Christ for all our righteousness in the sight of God all our human effort is like filthy rocks no man can boast of absolute righteousness you can be morally right but outside Christ outside the righteousness of Christ is nothing because even the heavens themselves are not clean in the sight of God the heavens no matter how bright they are, they are not even pure enough in God's sight. Our righteousness is in Christ. So, 
no man must boast of his own righteousness no matter how right you are no matter how no matter how the right standing you have before God it is not outside the righteousness of Christ let's look at some Bible verses two Bible verses from the Old Testament Jeremiah 23 6 and 33 16 in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safe, safely and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness so our righteousness is going to be in Christ not gotten not to be gotten through the blood of animals anymore but it is going to be through Christ and Christ alone through faith and the finished work of of Jesus Christ Jeremiah 33 16 in those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely and this is a name wherewith she shall be called the Lord the Lord our righteousness now when Jesus Christ actually came into this world John before he came John was sent to prepare the way for the Lord and when John saw Jesus Christ the first introduction of Jesus this is the way he introduced Jesus Christ to the people of the world uh, John 1 29 and 36 the next day John see Jesus coming unto him and said behold Lord, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world verse 36 and looking upon Jesus as he was he said behold the Lamb of God what was Lamb used for for sacrifice and throughout the ministry of Jesus Christ he was teaching this that I will be crucified the Son of Man will be given into the hands of sinners and they will kill him although Peter didn't understand the mission of Jesus Christ fully that was why he rebuked Jesus oh you will do that we will die we will do this and Jesus Christ warned him and rebuked him Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world he is the Lamb of God now um, let's look at what happened when Jesus Christ was on the cross two main things I want to point out in Luke chapter 23 42 to 43 Jesus Christ forgave the former criminal on the cross he didn't die a criminal people still call him criminal that man is not a criminal he was a former criminal he was a repentant criminal yeah two criminals were crucified with Jesus Christ but one died a criminal the other one died a saint now this is a man who lived all his life for himself and for the devil he was doing the works of darkness but the last hour of his life he met with the Savior <laughs> okay let's look at what happened and he said unto Jesus Lord he even calls Jesus Christ Lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom and Jesus said unto him verily I say unto thee today thou shalt be with me in paradise wow listen this man never got baptized this man never even prayed he never fasted he never did evangelism he never gave offering remember Jesus Christ said a certain man be born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God 
And right there on the cross, Jesus says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now, um, if, if someone right there on the cross is making heaven, just because he, conf he believed and confessed Jesus Christ and asked him for the, for the free gift of life, if he could get it, how much more we who are alive, who have enough time, we are even baptized, we take the last, we partake in the last supper, we take his body, we take his blood. But let me just quickly shift this in. That man was allowed into the paradise of God even though he wasn't baptized because he did not have the opportunity to get baptized. Yes. If he had the opportunity to get baptized in water and then he says, no, baptism doesn't mean anything and then he is disobedient. And no disobedient person enters the kingdom of God. You can't, you can't, the very thing, the ceremonial activity, the ceremonial ritual you're supposed to perform that represents the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can't say, oh no, I don't want to do it, that's work. I don't want to do it, Jesus Christ, I don't the cross. So if it is not necessary, why would Jesus said, except a man be born again? He cannot, not may not. So if you have the opportunity to get baptized and you don't want to get baptized, that's disobedience. That's stuck disobedience. But this man was allowed into heaven because there was no time. But he believed if there had been time enough for him to get baptized, why not? Meanwhile, let me just ask a simple question. If the one that owns the heavens and the earth and the new earth and the new paradise, the new heavens, if that person says, come to heaven, who can say, don't go? Jesus Christ is a fulfillment of the law and the prophets. That's the truth. The prophets of old prophesied about him. There's going to be a time that the Lord will be our righteousness. That our righteousness is not going to be based on sacrifices, based on uh, ceremonial observance of the law, but based on the free gift of Christ alone. Jesus Christ becomes the fulfillment. And he is the end of the law to them that believe. Jesus is a fulfillment of the law, of the Old Testament law. And he also is the fulfillment of the prophecies of the holy prophets of God in the Old Testament. Now let's look at verse 20, verse 46 of Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, 46. And about the ninth hour. Jesus Christ cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So why will you not be forsaken? Jesus, why will you not be forsaken? You just declared a sinner free and righteous. And he was accepted. Why will you not be forsaken? You have been made sin. And the eyes of God cannot behold iniquity. Jesus Christ bore all our sins on his head. And he died our death. This is why baptism, what a baptism is a must. It is very, very important. Jesus Christ died, and the way he died, before you can, can enter into the kingdom, you have to pass through the same process and die with him. What are you dying for? You have to 
die to your old life, die to the flesh, die to the things of this world. You have to die to your own human will. And from the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, you start practicing that prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. The first environment of this earth on which it or which you invoke the will of God is yourself. And you have to make sure you impose God's will upon yourself. So whenever you pray that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven, you are saying, I have nothing to do with my will anymore. Anything I do must be God's will. It has to be the will of the Father. If you do not allow God's will to be done in your life, you can't command the will of God to come to pass in the world. The will of God must be done in your life first. It is when you have allowed the will of God to be done in your life. That is when you can exert that government. You can't command the will of God upon the world. And it becomes effective if you have not allowed the will of God to be done in your life. The government of Christ, the Prince of Peace, has to be the king of your life. And he has to execute, execute God's will in your life. It is when the will of God is being done in your life, in you and through you and by you, that is when you can say, you demons, this is not God's will. This is the will of God. And I'm here, I am here to superimpose the will of God upon this situation. Get out! That is when your words can become effective because the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You have to be right with God. You have to bring down the will of God upon your life. If God's will is not being done in your life, you are not right with God. And your, when you promulgate anything, it will not stand. Because the will of God has not been established in your life. It has to be established first in your life. So let's move on. Jesus Christ cried. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why are you leaving me? Yes, Jesus Christ was forsaken for a moment because of your sins and my sins so that we can become the righteousness of God in him a lot of people boast with their own righteousness oh you are a hypocrite because you have no righteousness of your own it is the free gift of God let's look at first Corinthians chapter 1 30 and 31 but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness. He is made, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and certification and redemption that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the lord not in himself we have no glory of our own oh we know you don't drink alcohol glory be to god not glory be to you We know you don't womanize. Oh, glory be to God. We know you don't steal. Glory be to God. We know you don't practice witchcraft. Glory be to God. We know you are not a deceiver. Glory be to God. Because by human strength, by personal strength, by individual strength, no man 
prevails. So it is not of him that run it. It is not of him that will it. But it's of God that showeth mercy and supplies the grace. It is by God's grace. I'm not standing on by my own strength. Because there was a time my own strength failed me even as a pastor. And I had to rely only solely on God's grace. There is no need to boast. Let him that glory it. Glory in the Lord alone. Not in himself. Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is a power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written. The just shall live by faith. The righteousness of God is revealed through the gospel. As we preach the gospel, people hear the word of faith, people hear the gospel, and they believe it. And God washes them clean. What did the criminal on the cross do? He only believed and confessed his faith. He rebuked sin and supported righteousness. And he didn't stop there. He said, I know you have a kingdom. Remember me in that kingdom. I know you've been preaching about a kingdom. And I, this is my last moment. I know you have a kingdom. Please remember me in your kingdom. Jesus Christ told him, Today, today, as you give up your ghost, you will be with me in paradise. The same thing I'm telling you today. You don't have to make any sacrifice anymore. I know you may have stolen, you may, may have killed, you may have done all sort of things. I tell you the truth. You just need to believe in your heart. Repent of your sins. Just like the criminal on the cross. And say, God, be merciful to me. Forgive me. My righteousness is from you. Let me tell you. There is no amount of good you do. There is no amount of good works you do that qualifies you for heaven. And again, I tell you, there is no amount of evil you do that qualifies you for the punishment in hell. Because it is too much. It's too much. Heaven is too beautiful to be earned. Heaven is too good to be earned by human efforts. Hell is too bad for anybody to receive as a recompense for their evil. It wasn't prepared for man. It was prepared for the devil and his fallen angels. It wasn't meant for man. Both are free. Heaven is free. Hellfire is free. You choose one. Which one do you choose today? Choose one. Both are free. You can make your choice today that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is the free gift of God. Our righteousness is in Christ alone. We have no righteousness of our own. Our righteousness is of Christ. And if you can just believe in him, if you can just put your trust in him, the Lord will give you the garment of righteousness. Now let's look at the last verse for today. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek the righteousness of God, not your own righteousness. The righteousness that is revealed 
through the gospel the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus the righteousness you attain by God's own standard through God's own grace the righteousness you receive as a gift from God not by works not by sacrifice but as a gift so that nobody glories in his own name that is a righteousness God wants you to seek not the righteousness of hypocrites not the righteousness of the Jews through the law but the righteousness that is a gift from God himself we have nothing to pay we just need to believe and accept this righteousness next week we are going to talk about our responsibility if we receive this gift as righteousness free of charge the gift of righteousness when we receive it what do we need to do shall we continue in sin that grace may abound no what is our responsibility is it enough to just say i have given my life to jesus christ remember you just got admitted into a kingdom and there is a lifestyle of this kingdom you just got admitted into you and your addictions and your bad character and your uh, bad lifestyle you have just been admitted into the kingdom of god raw just as you are what do we need to do this is what we're going to talk about the next message a righteousness in christ what do we need to do let us pray oh lord our god thank you our savior will give you praise thank you for your love thank you for your care thank you for speaking your word to us today lord we ask that you cause these words to bring forth good fruits in their hundreds their thousands in their twenties in their sixties in the name of jesus christ we rebuke every thief that wants to snatch your word from us rebuke every demonic power that wants to steal your word for those of you who want to receive this free gift of righteousness i pray for you that the power of the lord we see you through the glory of the lord we envelop you receive grace to be born again thank you lord for forgiving us our sins and for accepting us into this kingdom lord i pray for as many that have been supporting this ministry release your blessings upon their lives release your grace in abundance upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ may he be well with you lord god heal the sick raise the dead those who are dead in their spiritual lives those who are dead in different aspect of their lives lord raise them up in the name of jesus thank you lord for hearing our prayer in jesus christ's name we pray amen if you're new to this channel hosanna eew please subscribe to this channel and also share our videos and as you subscribe try to turn on the notification bell please share our videos with other people share our videos uh, sharing our videos will help to expand the reach of the truth it will help the truth to go to other people who don't have the truth you don't know what can just save someone sharing a video could save someone then again if you were led to support our ministry please our candidates on the screen we will appreciate you if you support our ministry and also if you want to give your life to jesus christ or you want to reconcile yourself back to god feel very free to reach me my contact details are on the screen if you look at the description box you will see my contact details whatsapp if you want me to pray with you feel very free to do so there is no more time the lord jesus christ is coming back again thank you for watching see you next time bye bye